Today is about that special cinematic look and how you can create it for your videos. Cinematic basically means that a video has the look and feel of a professional cinema movie. Of course, there are many aspects that need to be considered, from the right camera movements to the right image format. Some of it can be realized in editing. Today I will show you how you can give your videos the cinematic look in Final Cut Pro. Basically, however, the techniques are the same in all editing programs and only the interface of each respective program changes. My name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and this channel is about filmmaking and GoPro. Consider subscribing if you're new here and have fun with this video. Today I will show you everything with some of the shots I made this year in Scotland. I will put the link to the final video in the video description. When you create a new project in Final Cut Pro, you have to choose the resolution and frame rate. If you want your video to look cinematic, the frame rate is very important. You have to choose a low frame rate, 24 frames per second or 23.976. In the PAL region, of course, you can also choose 25 frames per second. A low frame rate has a few disadvantages, but it's definitely cinematic. This is simply because more or less all cinema movies are reproduced at this frame rate because we've gotten so used to it by now, you can immediately see the difference to a higher frame rate. Personally, I choose 25 frames per second because I live in the PAL region and mostly film at this frame rate. When it comes to resolution, I choose 4K, simply for the best possible quality and because Final Cut can handle it without any problems and the workflow on my 2017 MacBook Pro doesn't slow down significantly. But I will come back to the resolution later. A few more changes might make sense here. I now drag the clips onto the timeline and will also briefly go into my workflow. For this video I use clips of my GoPro, my Sony and my drone. If you are interested in the equipment, have a look at the links in the video description. After selecting the clips, I put them in the right order. The order should of course match your story and what you want to tell with your video. Now I have to decide for which clips I want to use slow motion and for which not. Of course only those clips that were recorded with a high frame rate will be considered. I choose slow motion and 25% because these clips were recorded at 100 frames per second. Recently there has been a lot of criticism that slow motion is used too often. However, slow motion has the simple advantage of stabilizing the footage and eliminating ugly camera shake. In addition, videos in 25% slow motion also look particularly cinematic because until not long ago, this could only be achieved with very high quality professional cameras in an appropriate quality. In summary, I would say that slow motion is one of the many instruments to give your clips a cinematic look. You just shouldn't overdo it. After choosing the clips and their approximate length, I cut them to fit the music. There are several techniques for this. Today I just cut to the beat. For this video, I use a song called Token of the band Fernweh. This song is subject to a Creative Commons license and can therefore be used free of charge. So thanks again for making this amazing song available. To make the whole thing even more realistic, I will add some sound effects. Final Cut Pro already offers you a relatively large library of sound effects. You can find more sound effects online, similar to music, there are also paid subscriptions. For this case, I will add wind, ocean and seagull sounds. After cutting and adding the sound effects, I do the color grading. Before I start with the actual color grading, I will color correct the clips first. They were shot with different cameras and therefore have different color profiles. I add a color wheel to each clip and adjust exposure. If necessary, I add some saturation and adjust the white balance. I'm only doing this very roughly at the moment. If necessary, I can make minor corrections later. I made a video about color corrections some time ago. So just check my channel if you're interested in the topic. If you are convinced that all clips have an appropriate and similar saturation, the white balance is correct and the exposure is right, you can apply a lot. You do this by adding the custom LUT color effect to your clip. Here you can select your LUT. However, pay attention to the color profile for which your LUT was created. So whether it was created for lock profile with low saturation and low contrast. This could fundamentally change the workflow. I made this LUT especially for the Scotland video. I decided to create a slightly desaturated moody look that matched the footage and the song. When it comes to cinematic color grading, of course, there's not just one right color look. Color grading is a very interesting and exciting topic. I will certainly make another video on this topic. The shots of our consumer cameras don't look so high quality compared to a professional camera. This has to do with the color depth and because they lack dynamic range. Color grading and darkening or brightening of the image can also lead to details disappearing in certain areas. Therefore, you should check the exposure of the clips again after adding the LUT. To further improve the dynamic range of the image, I add a color curve. By dragging the exposure curve downwards for the highlights for example, I get more details again. Finally, I take a look at the individual clips and check whether the exposure and color match. 
If you shoot with several different cameras, this step will take a bit longer. Some people like to add some film grain to the image to create this analog look. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. But that's a matter of taste, of course. On YouTube, you probably wouldn't see much of it anyway. When I'm satisfied with colors and editing, I take care of stabilizing the shots. Correct and good stabilization is extremely important if you want your videos to look cinematic. I use the stabilization feature of Final Cut Pro to do that. Image stabilization doesn't always work well. Depending on the situation, sometimes a wobble effect is created. If this is the case, you can try to solve the problem using the stabilization settings. However, this won't always work. Of course, you don't have to stabilize every clip. For some clips and videos, a somewhat unsteady handheld look actually works quite well. In many cases, however, a well-stabilized image looks much better. Now we take another look at the image format. At the moment our image is in a 16 to 9 format. In order to give our video the last cinematic touch, we should change this format and convert it into a cinema-like widescreen format of for example 2.35 to 1 or 2.39 to 1. There are several techniques to realize this. The easiest way is to add the letterbox effect to your clips. Then select 2.35 to 1 as aspect ratio. Now you have to check if the framing is correct for all your clips. Use the offset slider to move the image up or down. You could also add black bars to your timeline in the form of a PNG file. However, both techniques have several disadvantages. Especially if you watch the video on devices with a widescreen format, for example certain smartphones, the video will not fill the whole screen, but will be displayed in a reduced size with black bars. It would therefore be correct to create your video in the correct format so that it can be displayed optimally on all devices. The optimal format would be 2.35 or 2.39 to 1 as I said. We get this format by dividing the 3840 by 239 at a 4K resolution of 3840 to 2160. The result of 1607 then leads to a resolution of 3840 to 1607. We now select our project, go to modify and select custom on the format. Then I enter for the resolution 3840 to 1607. And now we have our cinematic image format. This procedure has only one disadvantage. As it's not a standard YouTube format, you can't add an end screen when uploading to YouTube. You also need to change the scaling of your clips to adapt them to the new format. If you want to set the framing correctly from the beginning, it makes sense to set the resolution of the project correctly from the beginning and not to change it afterwards. And that's it actually. If you liked the short tutorial, give me a like as feedback, subscribe for more tutorials and see you next time.